Okay, good day, future LPTs. Welcome back to Gurong Pinoy Review Session for English Majors. Today, we are going to rationalize set 12, the last set. Question number one. Which is the heart of the theater experience? A, actor-director relationship. B, actor actor relationship c audience director relationship d actor audience relationship okay the correct answer is letter d actor audience relationship the heart of the theater experience is the actor audience relationship theater is a collaborative form of performing arts that uses live performers, usually actors or actresses, to present the experience of a real or imagined event before a live audience in a specific place, often a stage. Through the theater, we express in such a way that we experience something from our world. Theater is an experience. Theater also informs. Actors share experience or information, and the audience becomes expressive. The people watching also recall their experiences while watching the play. It is the basic relation between the actor or performer and the audience. By the way, my spelling of theater is British. English. In American English, it's T-E-R instead of T-R-E. Okay? Next, number two, to be or not to be. That is the question. This is taken from which play by William Shakespeare? A, Romeo and Juliet. B, Macbeth. C, Hamlet. D, The Taming of the Shrew. To be or not to be, that is the question. This is taken from which play? By William Shakespeare, it's Hamlet, letter C. Hamlet is a tragedy by William Shakespeare. It was written sometime between 1599 and 1601. It is considered to be the longest play of Shakespeare, composed of 29,551 words. The ghost of the king of Denmark tells his son Hamlet to avenge his murder by killing the new king, Hamlet's uncle. Hamlet feigns madness, contemplates life and death, and seeks revenge. His uncle, fearing for his life, also devises plots to kill Hamlet. The play ends with a duel during which the king, queen, Hamlet's opponent, and Hamlet himself are all killed. That is the tragedy Hamlet, written by William Shakespeare, the longest play of Shakespeare. Number three, which poem of Walter Scott has stirring narrative in verse, superb description of the wild in historic places, and complete medievalism? A, look and bar, B, boat song, C, soldier rest, D, the lay of the last minstrel. The correct answer is boat song. Sir Walter Scott was a Scottish novelist, poet, historian, and biographer. And he is often considered both the inventor and the greatest practitioner of the historical novel. The answer here is both song, but I want to discuss a little bit about Lochinvar, one of his more famous poems. Well, Lochinvar is a fictional romantic hero of a ballad written by Sir Walter Scott. Lochinvar is a brave knight who arrives unannounced at the bridal feast of Ellen, his beloved, who is about to be married to a laggard in love and a dastard in war. Lochinvar claims one dance with the bride and dances her out of the door, swooping her up onto his horse and they ride off together into the unknown. 
Number four, which of the following beliefs is consistent with the bottom-up perspective in reading? A, a reader could read a text when he or she uses his prior knowledge to make sense of the text. B, a reader could read a text when he or she selects only the meaningful segments in the text. C, a reader could read a text when he or she relates the text to other texts previously re read. And D, a reader could read a text when he or she can translate the visual symbols to their oral equivalent. Okay, the correct answer is letter D, a reader could read a text when he or she can translate the visual symbols to their oral equivalent. Okay, uh, when you say oral, it has something to do with the sense of hearing. Okay, how the word should be sounded. So visual to sound, from visual symbols to their oral equivalent. Visual to sound. It says here that if he or she, the reader, can, can verbalize or can speak the printed form, then he could read a text. Bottom-up reading strategies begin with letter-sound relationship. That's the bottom. To achieve comprehension, the top. Next, question number five. When students maintain book logs, they, A, document the number of pages read each day, B, note date, author, and title. C, summarize what they have, re what they have read every session. D, rate the quality of the books. The correct answer is letter B, note, date, author, and title. Book logs or reading logs. This is usually a daily routine. There are many versions and forms of reading logs. You can download the form, actually. It is like every time you enter an establishment, you fill out certain forms, uh, especially during COVID time. No? When you enter a particular establishment, you write, you write your details. You, you indicate your name, your age, your address, and your temperature. In reading logs, it's the same. You indicate certain information, such as the book title, whether you read alone or with parents, the date, so on and so forth. So this is one way for the teacher to assess and monitor reading activity, book logs or reading logs. Number six, in which stage of the reading process does a student set, set targets? A, reading, B, extending, C, exploring, be preparing to read. Again, in which stage of the reading process does a student set targets? The correct answer is preparing to read. This is pre-reading. Activities in this phase help the learner to be more prepared for what he or she is about to read. One of which is to set, to set reading targets. Option A, reading, is done during the reading proper. Options B and C, extending and exploring, are after reading activities. Okay, number seven, whereas incorporating Greek religion and myths had a huge impact on Roman art, the indigenous original Roman myths are largely restricted to A, racist caricatures of exotic more Eastern Greeks. B, stories about the founding of Rome and the ancestry of powerful families. C, stories about their old alliances with the Trojans during the Trojan War against the Greeks led by Agamemnon. D, stories about apocalypse, the end of the world. The correct answer is letter B, stories about the founding of Rome and the ancestry of powerful families. Roman mythology is a collection of traditional stories beliefs, rituals that Romans used to describe the origin of Roman civilization, Roman culture, history, and religion. 
Romans tried to explain their origin, history, and religion all throughout mythology. Their social, religious, and cultural beliefs were centered on Roman mythology. Founding of Rome is also a well-known myth. It describes two legendary characters, Romulus and Remus, who were twin brothers and were born to a woman named Rhea Silvia and Roman god of war, Mars. Question number eight. What is the problem linguists try who study second language acquisition or SLA trying to figure out? A, they try to figure out the cultural dimensions of language learning. B, they try to figure out how people learn L2s, the second language, and which factors help or hinder language learning. C, they rank and recommend the best language learning software programs available to date. And D, they try to figure out how people learn their first language, their L1. Correct answer is letter B. They try to figure out how people learn L2s and which factors help or hinder language learning. In SLA, the second language acquisition, oh, this is my master's degree. This, this is uh, what I specialize, no? English as a second language, second language acquisition. In SLA or second language acquisition, the basic question is how people learn a second language and what helps in learning L2 and what blocks learning L2. Anyone at any age can learn a second language after a first language is already established, but it takes a lot of practice. Second language acquisition often happens when a child who speaks a language other than English goes to school for the first time. Number nine, Africa, my Africa. Africa of proud warriors in ancestral savannas. Africa of whom my grandmother sings. The lines above describe an Africa that is a mysterious, and unexplored, B, war-torn and undeveloped, C, free and beautiful, B, primitive and uncivilized. The correct answer is letter A, mysterious and unexplored. The author here is David Diop. By blood, he was, Afri he was African. No? His father was from Senegal, while his mother was from Cameroon. But he was born in France. David Diop was a proponent of a movement called Negritude, which is a consciousness of and pride in the cultural and physical aspects of African heritage. Generally, the poem talks about the effects of colonialism in Africa. But here, just the lines here, brings us bring us the lines bring us to the question why is africa called the dark continent it's not because the people there are dark no africa is called the dark continent because it remained unexplored for a fairly long period of time in other words africa is mysterious so the correct answer is letter a here is an analysis of one literary critic. Africa, my Africa. Africa of proud warriors in ancestral savannas. Africa of whom my grandmother sings on the banks of the distant river. The poem begins with the poet saying that he originally knows nothing about the African land. Mysterious. He has got to know everything from his grandmother, who would sing to him and tell him stories related to his native land. The usage of the phrase ancestral savannas shows that the poet's ancestry has to be traced to Africa, even if he did not grow up there. And number 10, which type of reading is choral reading? A, guided reading, B, body reading, C, shared reading, the reading aloud. Correct answer is shared reading. 
During choral reading, students read together orally. So the correct answer is shared reading.